Well, I'm sure this is going to be a, a big job and expensive, not a whole lot of fun. I'm sure I'm going to get dirty, but uh, my rotors are starting to crack. Got a little over 60,000 miles, just starting to crack, so I'm not going anywhere for a few weeks or a month. So I got time to, to get them changed out, so that's what I'm going to attempt to do. So let's gather some tools and get started. All right, step one. Remember, this is a Workhorse W24 chassis. If you've got a different motorhome, it may vary. But anyway, with this one, when you get the, the chrome cover off, look for the, the chrome nuts that have the little stakes in them, dimples, whatever you want to call them. If you got two of them, take those two loose, and that socket is one and five eighths. And I'll take me a paper towel, fold it up like, like this, put the socket over it to protect it. So don't, don't scratch nothing up. So let's get that off first. So these come off fairly easy. I just used a half inch ratchet. And there you go. And also, let me see here now. I believe, yeah, I've never done it yet, but I believe these covers will pop off. Say for instance, you just want to check your oil without taking the rim off. These covers are designed to pop off. You got the little dimples. You just have to be careful not to scratch it up, but I don't know. It's probably just as easy to take the two nuts off. My luck, you take that off and it may not go back on right again, and then you'd lose it. That'd be, then you'd have a big hole in your rim. That would be pretty. All right, so got that off. Of course, here we can check our oil level. It looks fine. Actually, it's a little on the high side. I think it's the way the axle is tilted at the moment. And now this socket is this big monster here. What is it? inch and five sixteenths so that is okay now remember these things torque up to 475 foot pounds so it takes some grunt to get them loose now what i do i've had my wheels off before rotating them and stuff i do have a big impact i'm going to drag out here in a second to get them loose but even after i get them loose and put them back on with an impact it's still the impact won't i'm not sure if i'm getting them back up to 475 so what i do i go to a local uh, tire shop about two miles down the road and i borrow their they got a five foot long torque wrench that they let me borrow and I go out here and check my torque on the nuts and just do that myself. I think most tire stores would, wouldn't mind that you do that if you know somebody. Because you want to make sure you get them back to 475 for sure. So let's drag out that impact. See, I told you I had an impact. Look at this monster. <laughs> That'll really get with it. But if it, even it has a hard time getting them, getting them loose. But you don't need nothing like this. Luckily, a friend of mine gave, it, gave this to me, so it's good to have friends. So, uh... But, uh, you know, you could uh, probably go to Harbor Freight and get you a big socket, long breaker bar, and get them off yourself. No, no problem. So, let's get to work. That's going to be it's a two-handed job. So, I'll get this off. Okay, the wheel is off, and I don't know if it's going to pick it up or not, but you can see there's a little, I'm get, just starting to get some cracks, little micro cracks on the, the other side's even worse, but it's getting shady over there. So, and I even checked the rear disc, they're starting to crack also. So, luckily I found this early, and so I can do it at my leisure, I'm not going anywhere for the next two or three weeks, so i got time to take care of it. So I'll drain the oil out first, and we'll see how all this comes apart. Alright, see, I got me a little catcher here. In fact, I had planned on making a video just on how to change this oil. My ideal was to take the hubcap off like that, drive it down the road, get it good and warm, come back, you know, uh, set the tire so it would be in the down position, then unscrew this cap, and then I'll, I'll catch this oil. We'll see, see how it looks like, but unfortunately, I'm doing it cold. But I figured if you're going to change your oil, do it when it's hot, you get a better result. 
Just trying to get that lined up where it'll drain out properly. Let's see, I'm sure it'll make a mess. Well, it's pretty black, isn't it? Because that's 60,000 miles, won't it? Because it don't look like it's going to take very much. Of course, I take that outer cap off. I'm sure a lot more come out. And I get to get the, the brake caliper off. And, man, that thing's going to be big and heavy, isn't it? A lot of weight. All right, let's get some more tools. Well, look at here, I've already learned something. I did not know this. But that's got a magnet on the end of it. This little cap does. Well, isn't that interesting? That's good to know. So if you ever want to check how your bearings are doing, you could always rotate it so it's up, unscrew it, just take a peek at it. You can do that at any time, see if you got any metal debris. I've got a little bit of something on there, so I'm going to try to carefully uh, wipe that off on this white paper, paper towel and see what I see. Because I'll be inspecting the bearings once I get all this part anyways. Okay, so I wiped it off. You can see a little bit of metal. So, yeah, that would probably be a good maintenance thing. Just screw those caps, wipe them off, see how much metal you got. Just got a little fuzz, maybe it's all right. If you start seeing some chunks, you know, to get it serviced. All right, okay, moment of truth. Got the bolts out, take the cap off and see. Huh, no more oil. Well, look at there. What little oil can all that thing? Well, that's a shock. Very little. I was expecting a lot more than that. So I guess most of it stays in the hub. You're going to drain it. Wow. That's all you're going to get. Not much at all. Learn something else. See, the gasket is what's holding the oil in. See, you got this notch. So I'm going to cut me a slot, and we should get a lot more oil out of it. gasket is what was holding a lot of the oil in there so if you want to do a more thorough oil change pull the cap off I don't think it, I mean, the gasket looks looks well and um, cut you a little notch or if you ever change the gaskets cut you a notch so the next time you do a, a oil change out of it the notch will line up with that with the notch in the cap and you get more, more oil drained out of it there you go. Okay, now these brakes are made by Meritor. I think I'm pronouncing it right. And you got these big old giant back here. Get the phone to working. Bright light. There it is. Those big giant bolts. They're an odd size. It's probably metric, but I found a socket. I found an uh, inch and, inch and uh, three sixteenths. Did fit it. And I had to use a cheater pipe to break them loose. You better eat your Wheaties because they're tight. So I got them broke loose and I'll back them out, get the caliper loose, and see, go from there. In case you're wondering what your ABS sensor looks like, it's right down there, and all you gotta do is just twist and pull it out. I pull it out part way. That's something you need to clean sometimes. Sometimes they'll get debris and stuff on them. Your ABS sensors, you get an error on your dashboard, take them out, clean them. Cut that off. Uh, there's one bolt on this little bracket right there, I took off, so get that done. I've only got one bolt holding the caliper on. I'll take it loose and I'll have to get me something to hang it up out of the way so I'm not pulling on this brake line. Get me to damage that. Well, I tell you, you need to be ready because that, that thing, when you take that last bolt out, man, that dude is heavy. Heaviest caliper I ever got a hold of. And I did see one of my brake shoes are cracked. So it looks like I'll be ordering new brake shoes also. You know, I don't know what else I'm going to need. I'm sure the parts list is just going to keep growing. So, man, after 60,000 miles, look how turn, easy that turns. So now we've got to get this big nut loose. Gosh, man, that sucker's going to weigh a lot. I better eat some weeds before I get a hold of that one. Okay, I'm about ready to take the hub off. You see I got the big old nut, nut washer. Came right off real easy. Um, here's the bearing. It looks really good. I'll clean them up some gasoline after a while and inspect them but when I was reading the repair manual it said something about some of course sort of special sleeve for protection as you pull this off I guess it's so heavy as you slide that off it may ding the the, sur the surface 
So I didn't, I don't have a special tool, don't know what it looks like, but I, I made, I'm going to make one. I'm gonna, I got my wife's uh, cutting board and little plastic things. So I'm going to roll it up, slide it in there. I'll use that for, for protect it, protect that shaft. Just don't tell her until I've done this. Okay, that's what it looks like. Got that slit in there, so it should protect it. Hopefully that oil and grease will come off. I don't know. Next thing she cut may take make cuts for us, may taste funny. Well, let's see if I can get that to slide off and hopefully I can handle it. it looks pretty heavy. Okay, well it came off pretty well. You just gotta be ready for it. You get a good a hold of that stud here and carefully get your skinny fingers back here and uh, support it as it slides off. Came off real well. And all this is nice and smooth. Got a little dirt on there. Well, that looks looks like brand new, don't it? So, but I suspect I'll check out those seals. Don't know whether to get new seal new seals or not. But I'll look into that and see. Inspect the bearings real well and uh, get some uh, rotors changed out. Let's look at all those bolts I gotta take loose. Good gravy. Lots of bolts. Lots of bolts. Oh yeah, there is something bugging me. I don't know what this is. Seems to have no purpose. Just hanging there. That's somewhat of a mystery to me. What does it do? Why is it there? Unless it's to hold a wire, maybe. In certain applications, I would assume. But I don't see that it has an application on, on the W24. If somebody knows, let me know. Okay, well they're calling for rain, so I'm gonna, I got me a rag here. I'm gonna wrap this spindle up, soak it in oil, so it'll be protected. But I was also going to mention, remember, if you go to change your oil in your front wheel bearings, one quarter 90 weight. I thought, is it GL5? I believe that's what they recommend. One quart will do you. It'll take take care of both sides easy. So um, I'll get this buttoned up, drag my tools to the other side, and take the other side apart. Well, it's after 11 o'clock at night. It's not a lot cooler now to work. And I was going to show you this. Caliper will not come off on the on the rear unless you take this uh, U-bolt U out off the leaf spring. Because you get really close. just won't quite come out. Now the bottom bolt you can get out. But this one here will not come out. It hits, it hits right in there. So you get that one out of the way. You have to be careful because you got to jack up you got to support this lower bracket because as soon as you take these bolts loose then all that starts to drop let's go sideways here see them. yeah that is on the leaf spring so i'm gonna and these things are tight good gravy it takes a big breaker bar and a cheater pipe to get them loose so when i get done i'll have to look up the torque spec and get them back in place i know it's gonna be way up there in torque so that's my next step, and I have to get that done. Now I get the caliper off, slide the axle out. Tomorrow I'm going to go borrow, I think the socket is it's like an inch and a quarter, inch and three eighths. Huge socket it takes to get that nut loose, to get this whole hub and, and rotor off. And you can imagine how much that's going to weigh. So, all right, won't work. Well, now you can see I'm at the back wheel. And the axle, of course, got to pull the axles to pull the hub to get to the rotor. Yay, all that fun stuff. And I've never pulled this, nothing this large before. Done some car axles, truck axles in the past. And as I took this nut off, I, I got a little bit confused. I pulled the nut off, and then I saw this flat washer. Then I thought, oh, what the heck is that, a lock washer? What was, why is a lock washer doing on there first, then a flat, then a nut? But no, it's not the case. These are actually called cone, cone washer. Look at it is. What one, that's what it looks like and uh, so that's a cone washer that's what really locks that axle really tight to the hub and or into the stud it all kind of cre creates a real tight wedge of course they can be boogers to get off so I mean because I loosened up the nuts you see I got me a big sledgehammer I whacked it a, several times then this small little lead hammer tapped around the sides it finally came loose so I put some penetrating oil on there that may have helped but, uh, you know, didn't, no, no special tools for that. But I do know when I get in here, there's a big, large 
nut so I'm going to have to borrow a socket from somebody I just gotta I gotta measure it see what size it is and go back to the manual and see the right, correct pro process to, to do that so anyways so that's what I've learned today I thought I'd show you this here's our axle of a W24 that great big bearing in there Large nut, we got this little locking tab. I'll have to bend back, get the nut loose. Trying to get that, get the caliper off, get that, golly, now what do you think that thing's gonna weigh? Oh, it's gonna hurt my back for sure. So, uh, I can't remember if I'd said this before or not, but before I took the axle loose, I took me a punch, made me a mark on the axle and the hub so I know it goes back in the same spot. So I'll slide this dude out and start taking some more stuff apart. Well, this workhorse is being a pain today, trying to, just trying to whoop me. It ain't, it ain't done it yet, but anyway, what I was going to do, update y'all earlier, you know, these big giant bolts that hold the calipers on. You know, I was thinking it was, well, I found a socket that fit that was a 1 and 3 16 but in actuality, they are a 30 millimeter bolt because it's metric. So it's 30 millimeter. So uh, I ran to Harbor Freight, picked up a wrench set that has a 30 millimeter in it. But because on, on the back, the, the rear axle, you don't have room to use a, um, a socket. At least springs are in the way, so you have to use a wrench. And you hate, I had to get creative because I'm only 145 pounds. And I ain't got enough oomph behind me to break these things loose. So you can see how the wrench is. And I put this little cheater pipe, cheater box, I guess you call it, and then used my hydraulic uh, jack, and it broke it loose super easy. You know, so. That's what I just got done doing. Let's see here. So now I can um, take the rest of the way off. At least I was going to show you how that works here. Get that loose. And you just get an idea of how, it, how I did it. So that was a good trick. Got all this stuff. All right, I just have to go out and, and ball this inch and a quarter. Uh, six-sided socket it's kind of odd to get this thing get this thing loose just got the calipers off last night and you can see how freely that turns how big and massive that it is it turns really free so let's get that loose and see what it looks like where well, here I am about to pull this big monster hub off on the back I've got the nut, nut loose got the pull this bearing out what I did to try to help me, because I'm doing this by myself, is I took my jack and I took a, a ground me a little cup out. I'll show you when I get it done. Uh, so it kind of helps support that a little bit. So hoping I can kind of get the weight of it and slide it off. Probably not so important with the old seal, cause, but going back on when I was reading, you know, they want to make sure you don't damage the new seal. You want to try to get it on there. As straight as possible and get this bearing in there as quick as possible to support it so that is my goal we'll see how it works well I didn't really need the jack after all you see how I kind of notched that a little bit I might use it when I go to put it back on but it took a little bit took more tugging and jerking than I thought it would yeah that bearing was was hanging on pretty well and I'm gonna get me some memory paper and Clean this up. You can see where that seal rides. So I'm sure it's important to get the new one drove down in there. Same as the old one. Great big seal. Of course, now I got oil leaking on the driveway. So let me get this out of the way. Well, once you take these hubs off, you better lube these up good and wrap them up in plastic because they'll rust overnight real quick. So I'm going to spray me some oil all over it here real well. Put me a Walmart bag around it, a couple of rubber bands, so everything will stay nice and shiny. <clears throat> One more step I've taken, because I don't want to mix up these hubs, because I'm going to take off all the uh, the um, rotors, take them off, and clean the hubs up real well. But I don't want nothing gets mixed up, so I'm tagging each hub, so I know where to put it back where I found it. That's my plan, so we'll get to tagging, and, and these... These rotors, man, they're burgers to get off. Those bolts are so tight, they're put on with Loctite from the factory. So, uh, a half-inch impact, it fights it all, fights them all the way out. So, 
I gotta get them, get them in that. Yeah, I told you these are tight. Just give you an idea. I got the uh, compressors up to about 175 psi. Look how tight these are. It took a good eight or nine minutes to get all those off with that impact. Time that the air would leak, uh, run down and have to let it build back up. But this is something weird I've never seen before because I haven't worked on large stuff much. It's like a seal inside of a seal. So you got this seal here, and it and it floats inside of a another seal. It's being kind of a broker to get out because we're trying to be careful and not uh, harm the sparing in any way. So I'm working on it. I'll let you know how I get it out. Okay, I'm starting to get it out. I'm just applying. I'm using this pry bar. Just applying slow, steady pressure all the way around. And it's slowly coming up. I just got to have two hands to put a little bit more pressure, pressure on it. So let me get two hands on it and get this thing out. Okay, the seal is out. Look how big that dude is. Goodness gracious, it's a monster. Nice, pretty bearing. I'll get all these cleaned up real good, clean out the hub. My new seals are supposed to be in today. So I'll get them picked up, get this together hopefully. So here I am at the kitchen table and I'm going over my bearings. I've got my, I got new bearings in, I guess you can see. All new Timken bearings. <clears throat> My front bearing showed more wear than the rear. You can see these lines that have been kind of cut into it. Um, that one's not. It's got them too. But I went on the um, went on the website to Timken and watched some videos, and they said this is usually caused by too much in play on the wheels. Uh, on ours, I think the manual shows we want between one and five thousandths in play using a dial indicator. So I'll get into that later as I get things back together. And then on the back bearings, you can see they had some wear too. Not much. They, they, they have been okay, but I've seen I'm doing this all, all at the same time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put all new bearings in it. Well, it's 1.30 in the morning, and I'm down here prepping my bolts, working on the hubs. Got to get them real clean, get all the old grease out of them. Uh, first thing I'm doing is getting the old Loctite. See the old Loctite that's in the threads? So I'm taking it to my wire brush wheel on my grinder and cleaning out all the old Loctite. Get that done first. And uh, you all see I've done these already. Got them nice and shiny. Put me some PB Blaster down each hole, run the bolts in and out a couple times, then blow everything out real good and clean. So that way I know I get a true torque when I put these bolts in there. I'm sure that's pretty critical. And of course, relock time. So that is what I'm doing. It's going to take a little while. A lot of bolts. And clean these hubs up good. And hopefully get some races put in there tomorrow. That would be great. Well, I got one race pressed in. And here, I'm here at a friend's machine shop. And we're working on pressing in some more. But... The trick part is finding something that will fit just inside this hole, so he's running his lathe right now and uh, cutting down a piece of aluminum so it will fit just in here so we can press that down. We've already found some other pieces laying here that we can use on the larger races. We can get that done. But for the inside race on the front wheel, we're going to have to make something. But uh, it's a long press getting down in there. Well, that's what we're doing. Well, I've got the hub back here at the house now, back in the garage. And I'm, because uh, I've taken all the bolts, took them to the wire wheel, got them all nice and clean, all the old Loctite is off of them. And I also put uh, penetrating oil down in every hole, ran the bolts in and out a couple times, so I know there's no Loctite in there. And then I know, you know, I can take the screws out by hand. So that way, when I put the rotors on, and I do put a, fresh lock tight and retorque them I'm getting a, a, a proper torque I don't have to worry about the bolt binding up giving me a false reading because that would uh, 
possibly you could have a rotor come loose later. Sure don't want that to happen. Got that done. Uh, one thing I want to talk about, you know, is getting new races in. Uh, luckily, a friend of mine's got a machine shop. Uh, because getting them out was a burger. Now, I mean, it took like a big hammer like that and a lot of beating. You know, you, you just, on the back side, you tap one, tap the other. You just keep working it. But it, I, mean, I banged on them things for a good 12, 15 minutes before I got all the races out. And I knew, you know, to get them back in was going to be a struggle. And I've never worked with big stuff like this before. I've, I've done races with... Um, you know, old, you know, tra trailers and that kind of stuff where you use these type of uh, drivers and, you know, you can get them in pretty easy because, but I've always been taught to press a bearing in when you can. And I sure did not like the idea of beating these races in. And so I got to do a little research where my paper go. So I got online because these are Timken bearings. I were put all new ones in them. So I was, went to Timken's website to see what they say about how to install bearings and what their recommendation is and I did a print screen here they t they warn you you know so that you know, it says uh, no hardened drifts center punches or brass bars you know I thought well brass bar would be would be okay you think okay brass is soft you know it wouldn't hurt to race but they say no don't do that uh, press them in because it also shows um, you know what happens if you uh, on a race if you try using a punch and you, you know you blow up the picture and you, ha you have damage there uh, in fact even you know it's got X's on brass bars punches and um, what was that? oh yeah it does it say you know if you're gonna are trying to punch one down you know to use a 1020 or 1040 drift or key stocks I guess that's soft metal uh, so anyways but luckily uh, I went to the local machine shop and we found most stuff he had laying around in fact actually this one disc I had that worked on the smallest race but on the three other larger sizes uh, two pieces of metal he had laying around was just the right size but he had to we, he had to turn one piece down in order for it to fit but I got all those pressed in there so that's good I'm gonna get the bolts all cleaned up clean up the hubs I want to scrub these out really well so make sure there's no old debris that could possibly get into the new bearings. And I'm waiting for my seals. Hopefully they'll show up tomorrow. It's got a unique seal that runs in here. It's like a seal inside of a seal. It's like the, the part that grabs hold of the axle it doesn't doesn't spin on the axle, but it spins in the outer part of the seal. That's pretty interesting. And I notice even the seal that works on the front wheel bearing is, is kind of like it before. I'll show you that when I go to put that together. Alrighty. I'll get, get back to cleaning. Does everybody know what time it is? It's rotor time. So we've got rotors, we've got boxes. So I'm going to, have to put the rotors on. I just want to back up and talk about the other night when I was had the bearings out on the table and I told you I was going to put them in the freezer hoping to make it easier to install. Uh, but that's when I also got to doing research later that night about installing races and about the wrong way to do it is to you know trying to use a drift punch and uh, because I quickly found out you know just, it, it just been a, it would have been a nightmare you know trying to get down here trying to get the, that race started and beating side by side and then driving it all the way down imagine how many times you'd have to hit that bearing to get it all the way seated and hope you didn't slip off and damage that new new bearing race so there's no way I was going to take a chance that's why I took the time went to the machine shop and we made our tools, did what we had to do to, to get them pressed in. And uh, got that done. Oh, something else I was wanting to bring up in my research when I was re reading up on these bearings. Um, and when I was looking at the, the, some Timken videos and talking about uh, bearing failure. Uh, one thing was talking about, especially in our differentials, because this is on the rear axle. And this in the differentials... When I talked to the guy at Dana, he's been there for 30 years, and we was talking about motorhomes, and I asked him his opinion on how often to change the differential oil. He said if he had an RV, he would change his oil every year. He said because with the RVs, they sit so much, uh, and that big empty container sweats so much, puts so much water in the oil that you just uh, don't realize it. And uh, that you got, if that water gets in there, and over time that water lays on these bearings, and the, what the Timken website was showing was, you can see you'll have a pitting wherever each roller has been sitting. You'll get a rust on the race, creates pits, 
then when you start driving it down the road, then that's when the, the bearings start r rapidly failing. Uh, so um, I thought that was interesting. Of course, also when I put this together, I have to tilt the, diff the axle six inches both ways to get the oil to go into the, um, the cavity here. So to keep it, keep it looped up well. But just imagine how much weight that thing is carrying. Of course, it's, you know, 24,000 pound chassis. So I'm ready. I'm going to blow out these holes one more time, make sure they're clean. See, I've got all my bolts all shined up, all nice and dry, ready for the Loctite. And I got me a whole pile of paperwork here where I've been reading, doing my research, got all my torque specs, so I'll know what to these, these torque up to. Get all that done, and then maybe tomorrow, if we've got a pretty day, we'll start putting some hubs on. That's the plan. That is the plan. Okay, I've got my book out. I looked up my torque on these bolts. It's 125 foot-pounds. Got my torque wrench set, and I was getting ready to put the rotor on here, and I noticed, you see there's one spot, everything's machine surface, except for one spot here, and it's a layer of rust. It's kind of a little high spot. I got to thinking, well, what's causing that? So I looked at the rotor, and you notice there's one section, because you, know, you got the, the four little notches, you know, around the rotor. Actually, you no, know, it's three, pardon me. So you got three notches around the rotor, but only one happens to line up with a bolt. So I'm going to be sure to put that bolt right here so there's no chance of a, a high spot when I try to start torquing things down. Uh, you can see the same thing on that side. On the front hubs, not so much. You can see the front hubs. It happens on every one of them. There's a little bit of difference on the front hubs. So anyway, I thought that was interesting. Something caught my eye. So let's torque her up. Okay, well I got that one all torqued up. Let me tell you, 125 foot-pounds is quite a bit. All I wanted to do with that little that, that torque wrench to get it to go, to get it to click. I can't imagine when it comes to those big bolts, 20 millimeter bolts that hold the um, brake caliper on. Those torque to 360 foot pounds. I have to hire somebody to crank that dude on. I don't know what I'll do, but you know, because I think about. Imagine what it will cost. You know, all the time I've taken. You know, what garage would cost? Well, they charge 120 dollars an hour. To do a job like this of course I'm being as thorough as I can because it's the first time I've ever done a job like this you know and this is my RV and we're out traveling I want to make sure I get home you know everything's as good as possible that I can do based on what knowledge I can obtain so just like you know putting the, the thread locker on these bolts cleaning the bolts making sure they I can screw them all the way in by hand so I know the threads are clean nothing's binding up I'm not getting a fake torque so, I don't know how many people would go be, the, be that thorough, especially at a, a garage, you know, where they're backed up and got to get the jobs in and out real quick. Are they going to put this Loctite on there? Are they going to clean the threads out? Are they going to take the time to look up the torque? Or are they just going to let the impact do the work and, and hope that's enough? I don't know. So, that's why I like doing stuff myself. You know, it's not so much about the money. It's just making sure it's done correctly, what the manual says just don't know how many garages would uh, take this type of time but I am so we'll start putting these bolts in and get them torqued up too well I'm about to install my uh, main the rear bang on the rear hub and the seals just got my seals in and I was going to show you this I may have mentioned this before it's pretty neat this is the rear seal on the hub on the W24 and I've never seen one like this before Maybe I guess it's common on large stuff. I've just never worked on large equipment before. And uh, you know, cause this presses into the hub, uh, right down there. Oh, you know, see my neat poor boy's oil seal driver. I made that. So let me use that to drive the seal in with. Let's get ready for it. But what this does, this grabs hold of the axle tube and, and actually rotates. It, or not a very big, it don't wait to it. It sits still. This actually grabs hold of that tube and, and the this part rotates around as it goes because normally you'll you'll see a seal that grabs hold on the inside and does the sealing it's actually sealing from the outside so I thought that was pretty interesting because this is the old one it turns pretty easy the, the new ones turn kind of tight so I went ahead and put a little oil on the back side let them soak so that, at least that way they got some lubrication on them on the first startup uh, so nothing's dry gives nothing no trouble. So 
I got the bearing here. This is this is the oil I'm putting in it. Well, I've, I've been using it for a couple of years. The pure synthetic on the differential, 75 140. And of course, I'm getting the bearing all soaked good. Get ready to drop that in there. Put the seal in behind it, and hopefully get the rear hubs mounted today. Get that done, and then we'll work on the front hubs, brakes, and everything else. Well, once you get this project finished up, eventually. All right, and that priority. Got both bearings in there, both seals. My little poor man's oil seal driver worked really well. Drove it right in there. Got the bearings all lubed up well. I was going to show you how kind of how that seal works. It's pretty neat. You see how the seal how it rotates around once it once it once you press it on, it stays attached to the axle hub, and rotates inside of itself. So that's pretty different. I hadn't seen that before. All right, so. Now we see about carrying these big heavy things back to the RV and get them mounted. Well, I'm getting, uh, getting closer. I'm, right now, I've been reading in the manual, you know, because you've got to press the calipers back to make room for the new brakes. A couple of my brake pads have cracked in half, so I'm going to go ahead and change them too. But it mentioned in the manual you want to be sure to open up the bleeder before you uh, press back the calipers. But it didn't, it didn't say why, so I asked uh, Alan at Brazzles, and he told me the reason for is if there's any debris and stuff in your calipers, you don't want to jam that debris between the, you know, between the piston and the cup and, and jam it up and cause trouble. So by breaking the bleeder and then pushing that back, it'll flush it out. In fact, that's why I went a little step further and, and mounted this upside down. So if there's any debris, it would have settled to the bottom. I've pushed it out. But so far, I'm not seeing anything. Everything looks pretty good. So, pretty simple process. Just just crank in the, the C-clamp, and you can see the, the brake fluid squeeze out. So that's what I'm doing now. Oh, nice pretty day. Okay, moment of truth. About ready to put this big old heavy monster on this rear, rear axle stub. I went here and cleaned this up really good with some scotch bright, and hopefully this goes well. I've got the wife here, so as soon as I get it in there, she's going to slide the outer bearing on it. So that's the plan. Let's see how it works. Well, we have success. It went on fairly easy. I thought it would give me more trouble than it did. Once I got it on there, I just took the palm of my hands and, and bumped, pressed on it. And then I was able to just slowly tighten that nut up a little bit more make sure that this you got to be careful make sure that as you're going on with it that these threads don't come in contact with that new race so that was the only tricky part but I had the wife watching as I kind of carried it in there because I couldn't see as I was getting get it in position but that's going to work just dandy now I'll get the other side on and tomorrow I'll go ball that big giant I think it's three and a quarter socket I'll ball it set torque set the in play and all that fun stuff fun fun I'm getting on the other side, but I thought I'd point this out. I took a little a little wire brush here and, and some cleaner and cleaned out the ABS socket. And of course there's ABS sensor. So uh, cleaned it out good and I'll put some new. I can't know what they recommend. If they may recommend a little anesthesia or something on that or dabble grease, I'll have to look that up to put that back in there and so that it doesn't seize up. And I'm uh, getting ready to put the hub on this side. Fun, fun. It continues. Okay, now to the front hubs. And something different I've never, once again, never pulled with anything like this. Uh, something called a Stemco seal. There's a number of it. And it's kind of unique. Most of the times, whenever I put seals in hubs, you put the, you drive the seal, you put the bearing in first, you drive the seal in the hub, then you slide it all on the spindle. But this doesn't work that way. And you notice, get this thing apart, show you how it, it's because we got those oil filled hubs, they want to make sure the oil stays in them. So there's a particular way you got to do this. Because look at the ceiling surfaces on here. I mean, you got, you got one here, one here, and then you got one on the, on the back side. And you have this wear ring back here because this is the old one that needs to come off. And I got the new one here. It seems like to have some kind of coating on it to keep it from rusting. So I'll Put some carburetor cleaner on there to melt that off, whatever it is. But then, after you, I get this off, 
and you're going to put this on, you need to use a uh, number two Permatex sealant to make sure you have a good seal onto the back of the spindle so oil doesn't come out. And of course, you need a seal, a driver, but so I didn't have one, so I made one. I made a piece of PVC, an old sprocket off a go kart. So I can put that on here and a few whacks of a hammer, drive it right in place. So that should work really well. So my next step, they said just take a ball ping hammer, beat around on this, it stretches the metal just enough to, to get it off. So that's gonna take two hands, so we'll get to packing on the, on this. We'll see how it comes off. Well, they, the way they said to do it worked just fine. Just a ball ping hammer, stretch the metal. I just tapped all the way around it, stretched the metal a little bit. Then to help things along, I had this old wood chisel and got in behind here and tapped it to, to break it free and just just like that, came right off. And you can see the old sealant, I guess, in there where they had it before. So I'll clean all that up. Put my, you, can, you can even see some bluing on there where it kind of got hot at some point in time. So I'll get all this shined up. Put my, put my Permatex on there. Drive on my new, what's that thing called, a, a race? Wear ring, that's what it's called, a wear ring. Yeah, there it is. Wear ring. So, let's do that. I was just going to mention too, don't do what I did. This is the very first hub I pulled off when I started this project. And I left I, I left this exposed overnight without lathering in oil. And it rusted up on me. You see the little spots here. But I got me some scotch Bright, And it did a good job of shining. That's what I've been using on this, this here to get this cleaned up. And, and I cleaned this up here. Got all that like a varnish it's got some kind of goo on there so you want to make sure you get that cleaned off so that seal has something nice and shiny to run against so now all i gotta do is put me a my permatex on here and drive that in place and then put the seal in place and then put the hub on all that don't look so hard so let's, let's get to it well, that worked out just fine i did have to hit it Pretty good, harder than I thought it would, but I uh, slid this on here and, you know, about 10 good whacks with a hammer seemed to set it all the way back. And you can see where the little bit of Permatex oozed out, so it looks like I got plenty on there. So that should make a good seal. And then I'll I get the dust off this seal and put it in place. It's kind of weird, didn't you? Put this on and then you put the hub on, and then it will also, same way, you got to put Permatex on this part of the seal. So, oh, I was also going to mention, you know, because you take this part, you'll see that it has, has that Stemco number on it. And I thought, well, I'll just run the parts house here and get a seal. Well, they crossed it and they, it gave me a seal which had the right inner and outer diameter, but it didn't have the wear ring, nothing on the back side like a Stemco does. So be sure you get the right, because I just called Brazzles. I called him on Friday, John at Brazzles RV. Caught him on Friday, had it here Monday, uh, the, the seals I needed. So that's the way to do it. And that way you got the right stuff. Because you sure don't want to do this job twice. Just do it one time. Do it right. Alrighty. I wanted to give you an update on this thing. You, even using this pipe here, you really got to go to town and do some good beating on this thing to get it all the way back. Because you want to make sure this, you see, you see how it's kind of squeezed out a little bit on the back side? You want to make sure you get it all the way back. Because at first I didn't have it all the way back. I had a little lip. I said, well, that's not right. But now she's already seated. Because I can see if that didn't get done, that's just going to really screw up your seal and you're going to have a leak. So I think she's all the way back. Got the Permatex on there good. So I think we'll be in good shape to get ready to put the hub on. Okay, the sun's wet down. I'm trying to get this wrapped up tonight. Um, I wanted to clarify because I think I meant said earlier about you put sealant on the seal the outer part of the seal you don't you only put the sealant between the, the wear ring and the spindle that's where you put the sealant and you drive that on and you get the, the 90 weight because I got the GL5 gear lube what they recommend non-synthetic regular oil and you can see my bearing in here I got that pre-lubed and it wants to put you want to put lube on the outer part of the seal inner part 
on the wire ring put the seal on first I know it seems odd normally you always put the seal inside the hub but that's not how these work so we got that on there and then we slide the bearing on the, the spindle you don't put the bearing in, inside the hub like you normally would well, I might do it just for just check on the turning it's nice and smooth okay that looks good this on. It's just difficult to do this stuff one-handed. Okay, there it goes. Once you get it on there right, it just slides right up against that. Then you slide the hub on carefully. Don't not to damage the, the outer race. See how everything is nice and clean. And then when you put your nut on there, it it's, it slowly will, it will slowly get the camera in the right spot. So once you put this up here, tighten up the nut, and it will pr actually press the seal into the hub at that time. Isn't that strange? But that's what it says to do. So now definitely going to take two hands to pick, pick this thing up, get that on there. I need to get my other bearing, let it be soaking in the oil. That going on and we'll, we'll have this installed shortly okay well it's dark but it's a lot, lot cooler now and I was just going to tell you about you know I just slid the hub, hub up, up here and got the, the new seal and the process for getting that on there is you just as you turn this nut you rotate it at the same time so it will slowly press because you're acting like a press you're, you're, you're pressing the seal into the hub as you go around. Now, I've already done that because that's why it's going so easy because you, you have to kind of put some grunt into it. Then, it's getting tight now. Okay, then the next step is take the torque wrench. They want you to load the bearings up, torque them up to 200 foot pounds while rotating. Get 200 foot pounds, then break it, break it loose. Let me see, what was it? Break it loose. Uh, you have 200 foot pounds, break it off, bring the nut back off one full turn, then tighten up to 50 foot pounds while rotating the, the hub in both directions, then back the nut off 1 16th to 1 quarter, and that's when they'll set the carter pin, and it uh, should be loaded correctly at that time. And then, of course, at the final test, maybe after get some road time on it, is to get out here with, with a dial indicator and uh, check they've got 1 to 5 thousandths in play. So uh, we'll finish putting the car up. We'll do that process, drop the carter pin in it, and uh, put the cap on and fill it up with oil. I thought this was an interesting tidbit of information. You know how we occasionally we take that plastic cap off and drain out the oil, and when you ch you know change the oil in these front uh, wheel bearings on these W24s. I don't know if the 22 is another one's happening or not. At least I know the W24 does. And it not not very much comes out. So I got to looking at this because it's sitting perfectly level. But you can tell from this angle here why that happens because the bulk of the oil stays in that cavity. It will not drain out. Because you, you know you, when you remove that cap you can only drain out what can get past this lower race. And so all the oil that's down in here is just going to stay put so you might get half out the only way to get all of it out would be to pull the hub that means pulling the caliper and risk damage in the seal and all the other stuff so yeah probably not a good idea but anyway that's why we only get a little bit of oil when we take that off because half of it stays up in there so maybe a better idea would be change it more often instead of every 60,000 uh, do it every five or ten thousand it's real easy to do if you've just rotated around and take the little cap off you just do the little drain plug unscrew it but remember I think I showed you earlier to cut a notch in a gasket because that gasket keeps a bunch of the oil in there uh, so I'll show that to you when I go to put that last tub on tomorrow whether it's this last tub I'm about to wrap this up we'll eventually get there all right, cap's about to go on. Remember, earlier I mentioned about notching this gasket. So keep this in mind. Say, for instance, you got your cap on and you're going to change your oil on these. 
and all you do is, is unscrew this bottom drain uh, cap or drain hole screw or you call it if you don't, is that if that's all you do you're only going to get out very little oil if this gasket has not got a notch in it and it won't have because they don't come that way so you're only going to you know get, get out whatever oil comes across uh, this gasket now if you cut a notch in it you'll get a lot more oil and I'll put it down on here on the cap to give you a better idea so so I've I notched it to, to line up with the with the little drain yeah you can see how see where the drain plug is with a magnet and put that on there and then put it together so the next time I go to change oil on this thing I'll get a lot better drain get more oil out of it so anyway that's it, my tip for the day see you bye okay a good tip to remember if you go to just drain this by using this plug or take it probably best take the cap off because remember if you just take this plug off you're not going to get very much oil out if you haven't already notched your gasket which unless you do it purposely it's, it's not going to be that way because the gasket itself you know it keeps a lot of extra oil in there so if you if you take the cap off completely notch your gasket then in the future when you unscrew that little drain plug and remember it's got a magnet in there so let's screw that every once a year and just take a peek at it see if you got any metal debris on it be a good thing to do um but what i was wanting to point out is the fact i've added oil to this thing three times and you notice how it goes goes back to, down to empty again because it's so slow this thick 90 weight oil it's it takes a while to go past the um the uh, wheel bearing so it's probably a good idea to keep that in mind if you just go to do a, a drain and, and fill, uh, you know, fill it up, wait an hour, check it. You know, don't just fill it up, think it's full, and put your hubcap back on because you may find yourself low on oil and take out a bearing. So anyway, that's, um, so I've done it three times and you can see it's back down to empty. So I got to uh, put some more, more oil in there. And that's what I'll do. Well, I thought I'd add this snippet here. You can, See how easy it is to add oil. But it's amazing to me how quick it keeps running down. I'll fill it up. I check it and it runs back down again. So fill it up and then I'll come back and check it in an hour. Make sure it stays put. Okay, now I'm on the back hubs. I want to point this out. This is pretty neat. But I don't know if you the camera will pick it up or not. I get a light in there at the same time. There you go. Okay. You can see the differential gears back in the back and the splines and you can see the reflection of the oil at the very end but in the square tube in the axle housing there is no oil so i just want to point this out so you know you see you're right there where the oil plug is when you're level with oil there is no oil in these tubes the tubes are bone dry so that's why it's critical to keep that level. I was talking to the guy at Dana and he was explaining to me, you know, how the oil gets out there. I guess, because once you're driving, it starts slush, sloshing around and getting spun. And when you go around corners, then it will slosh out to the end of the hubs. But anytime you have these hubs off, you know, they're, they're quite deep. It's big shallow, they're dished out. But, um, of course, if you take them off, put them back on, there is no oil at all in those hubs. And that's why you've got to drop them down like it's six or eight inches. You know, I need to have to put extra oil in it and drop it down on both sides so that it uh, will fill these hubs full of oil. So that is very critical. So I was just looking at that. I thought that was kind of kind of interesting. But I, the guy at Dana, he said he get you know he gets calls like that all the time. People put in new bearings and they don't think about that. They put the RV back together, they go down the road and. After 100 miles, you have to have a bearing seize up because they didn't add extra oil to the differential and didn't drop the differential down at a at an angle on both sides to uh, get those hubs full of oil. So critical stuff. All right, now I got the fun part. I just got this big giant socket that I bowled, and I got to load these bearings up and get that part done. Fun, fun. Okay, it's time to torque up these uh, rear axle bearings. So I've got. Big socket, big old nut there. So I've already preloaded it to 200 foot pounds, which you know it still rotates kind of snug. It 
but the manual tells you exactly how to do it. You know, ins install the inner bearing, take up 200 foot pounds while rotating. Okay, then you back it off one full turn, rotate, you know, to rotate the, the hub. Well, you can do this one handedly. Well, you can't do it one handedly, that's for sure. I'm about to get two hands, break that free. So, anyway, I'll break that free, and then I will. Turn the, turn the wheel, take it back to 50 foot-pounds, and after I do that, back it off exactly one quarter. And they said that should give us between one to five thousandths in play, and you can confirm that with a dial indicator, if need be. So, that's what we'll Okay, do. here we go. I got my clicker torque wrench. Right there is 50 foot-pounds on the bearing. It says back it off one quarter turn. Well, change my ratchet. It's just not easy, won't be in one handed. Okay, take it back one quarter. Good gravy. Okay, one quarter turn. Alright. So I was saying that's where we should be. Well, it does turn free. Alright. Then I'll put the uh, other nut. Where's that big? I got this big lock, and I, I need to clean it up first. Uh, clean this up, put that on. And then the other nut behind it. And as I was, was going to mention, you know, before you go sticking a socket in there, make sure you clean it up good. You don't want to grab hold of some greasy socket, stick it in there, and just to contaminate your new bearings. So keep things clean. Keep them clean. Okay, it's time to put the locking device on here. Lock. Lock. They call it a lock washer. Tang type lock washer. That's what that is. So just put that right over there. Got that loaded in the right spot. This on here, we got to torque it up to 200, 250 foot pounds and then bend the tang over it right, so it don't come undone because that would lead to a bad day for sure. Okay, all right, so get that torque wrench out, load it up, and bend one of these tangs over, whichever one lines up with the flat, and we'll get this out finished. Okay, I'm on the other side. And I've got it all set and torqued. Got this jam nut jammed up to about 300 foot pounds. And you can see where the old tang was bent. Well, I'm, I don't want to take a chance of trying to bend it a second time and have it snap off later on down the road. So I'm going to bend this lower tang. But I was having problems with it because it's recessed in there so far it's hard to get to. So I got to think, how in the world can I get a hold of this thing pulled out? So then I had the idea of using the dent puller. And this is sort of a fancy dent puller here, just for pulling gears and things. So, uh, and it does work out really well. I done did the other side. You just get on here and slide it a few times. Put in the jaw hooks on the back side of that tang and just brings it right forward. So, let me give it a few taps and we'll get it in place. One, two, three. Are we recording? Yep. Right. I slipped off that one. more strokes on the back side. Now, now, you can, now you can see where did it go? Yeah, there it is. Now she's been over where she's supposed to be. Keep that from ever coming undone. Worked out pretty well. There you go. Alright, it's time to put this giant U-bolt back in. Took it to the wire wheel cleaned up the threads really well because if you remember when it, this thing was coming apart there's just not enough room when you have this u-bolt in there to get this bolt out pull the caliper because luckily if you want to change brakes you don't have to do that in fact while i'm here let me show you how easy it is to put brakes in these things now we'll pull this one out one-handed that might be a little more difficult come on baby get out of there all right boom there you go but, but to show you, if you want to change, change brakes on the W24, of course, once you get the dang tires off, that's the, that's the hard part. Get the tires off. you got one bolt to remove this, this plate here, retention plate, I don't know what it's called. Um, and then they just easily, so you got these, these stainless steel slides where the, where the brakes move back and forth. I shined them up real good, and I got that special grease to put on there. And, but easy peasy you just slide it 
right into place. Just like that. That's how you can change your brakes. That, that's an easy part. Now changing a caliper or rotor or bearing lord then that's a whole other story because then you're dealing with these big bolts, U-bolts. I have to put, see I have to put a jack under here to support the axle when I pull the U-bolt loose and all that fun stuff. So we'll get the U-bolt in there and torqued up to the proper spec. I got to look that up and I've got got this side all finished. Got the, that little tang bent over. That was a, a job in itself. Well, I got to cut that done. And then I'll go to the other side. Well, I figured this would be a good idea because this is what holds the brakes on. And you can see where the brakes move back and forth on this rust area. So I'm going to put a wire wheel to it, shine it up, make the surface a little bit smoother. So hopefully the brakes will move back and forth a little bit better. Hopefully have eliminate any dragging. So that's what I'm going to do. Well, it's not like new, but it is a lot smoother. And I got that real rough, scaly rust because that's where the brakes rub right here. So I'm going to put a little dab of brake grease on it. So we'll see that. Maybe that'll help things along. Okay, brakes are on this side. And I have to, uh, well, those U bolts were burgers. 140 foot pounds to get that on. Okay, brakes are installed. All went pretty well. Put the bracket on that bolt on the back side here. Had that little clip for the ABS sensor wire. Of course, the ABS sensor. Put it all back in there. Got it cleaned. Put a little brake grease on there so it wouldn't seize up on me. And all oh, the fun part was this crazy U bolt. That thing right there. That sucker. 140 foot pounds. What the book said. That took some grunt. And everything turns nice. We do the other side, put some axles in, bleed brakes. We'll be ready to go for a road test soon. All right, almost start. Axles are going in, and you see here we got Permatex on it. I talked to Alan at, uh, at Brazzles RV, and he said that's all they do is just put the uh, gray Ultra Permatex on there, and that's, yeah, that stuff here, Ultra Gray. That's what I used, and he said we shouldn't have any leaks, any problems with that. But I did learn this trick. Maybe other people know it, I don't know, but I didn't know this, but first of all, when playing with this thing, I was trying to push down. That was kind of hard to do. Actually, got, got my cameraman to hold that for me. All right. But then I realized if you just take something like this and pick up on it, it goes right in. Easy peasy. So before, I was trying to use my hands and about got a mashed finger. There we go. Now I just torque up my, got these crazy cones to put in. And... My washers and get it torqued up add some oil got to tilt the axles and um, and start bleeding brakes I guess that's it okay oils going into the differential and you can see here I've, I've changed I put me a remote I moved, moved my vent is what I did I got another video on differential oil change where I've moved my vent up higher in the frame to keep moisture and debris out of the differential and this is a lot easier way to add oil so just pull that loose and sit your, uh, your your quart jug up here and just give it a squeeze. Now my strategy is because we need to make sure we have plenty of oil out to the end of these hubs because they're completely dry. And like I showed before, you know, there are, there's no oil in these tubes at this time. All the oil is in the differential, even though it's, you know, completely full at the level mark. So and they want you to tilt the axle at least six inches. And even if I can jack this all the way up to here, I'm not going to get a six inch tilt, I don't believe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to overfill them. I'm going to put three quarts in here, so that should be more than enough. I'll jack it up as size as I can and get the tilt. And uh, of course, once I get my wheels on there, I could always um, use my jacks to tilt it more. But I want to make sure I have plenty of oil in there. And then when I'm done, I'll just drain out the excess through the um, side fill plug or the side plug. All right, so that's what I'm doing. And man, it's hot and muggy tonight in Kentucky, and the mosquitoes are biting. Okay, we're on the front brakes now, fixing to put the brakes in. But uh, as I was taking this apart, of course, I had to. I used the old brake pads and a C clamp to push the pistons back. And when I was doing it, there was more difficult to do than I wanted. It just felt like it was dragging, so I was concerned that maybe I had a piston sticking in the bore of the caliper 
causing which would cause the brakes to drag which maybe cause the rotors to crack so what I've done now now they got the brakes out out of the way um, pushing in each piston individually and I've already done it on on, on the other side and it, it goes in really easy I can just turn this one hand and it does go in easy so I know my pistons are good they're not sticking so I'm pretty confident I don't have a caliper issue because these are the good calipers for you know, the mar Meritors and they generally don't give much much issue so we are getting closer by the hour well I just thought I'd do a walk around see what a disaster this has been as far as it's just the time you do one you gotta gather up all your tools move around go to the next one and up and down up and down but about to put the tires on I just thought I'd show you my mess I've created all over the place. And oh yeah, I was going to show you how the... Because um, I've done bled the brakes. It's quite easy to do. Of course, once you get the tires off. That's the hardest part. But um, I got my little Ovaltine bucket here. Works great. You know, drink your Ovaltine. You're supposed to do that. But when you get done, punch out a little hole in there. Of course, I'm bleeding these brakes just like a vehicle, except for the, the W24 you know, with, with these big calipers you got two bleeders so get you out outside first and the inside go to the other other side on the rear axle and then do the fronts the, the same way of course it's a two, two person job we got on the cell phone and, and I, I'd have him pump it up and I'd crack it and he pe pedal will go down and just work my way around worked out quite easy because you got to remember to top off your um, a reservoir and I was going to show them the reservoir I think I, I went through because I pumped quite a few bit through it just because I wanted to make sure everything was fresh kind of give it a flush at the same time so one two and about ha half of this one so so uh, by three quarts if you're going to do this project and you can see I'm a little low I gotta add, add a little bit more to it uh, so I wanted to show you if you do you know go to change the oil in your hub see these hubs are completely dry no oil whatsoever and one uh, a quart here was able to fill both hubs completely so you don't have to buy two quarts one is enough even if they're completely dry and if you're just doing a change by just half a quart because you ain't going to get much out and drain it so i'm going to wipe the dust off my jacks and while i can get to them easy put some wheels on there and take it for a drive and uh, next process I guess is burnishing in the brakes that's kind of a weird process they want you to do about 45 miles an hour and slam on the brakes good and hard do that several times and uh, I guess it gets the gets the pads seated to the rotors and get them in good shape so that's what Here's we'll do now. for you because whenever I have because me may not pick it up on this camera but there's a lot of dirt and dust and grime where the neighbor cut the grass and grass sticking to it and all. I always wipe, you know, had them down for a while. I always wipe them off good. Get your microfiber rag. Get it shining really good. So all that dirt and dust and grit don't get sho shoved up into the seal. And in fact, I had a rear jack getting to where it was coming up really slow and burned out a solenoid because of it. So how I fixed it, I talked to a guy who rebuilds jacks. Nasty him what I could do about it. And he told me to take, take transmission fluid and lather the jack in the automatic transmission fluid. They retract it a few times that that will replenish the seal because the packing gets dry. And I did that and I never had any more problems. So I do that a couple times a year. And then uh, keeps those jacks working really good. So that's what I'm doing. Isn't that a strange sight? Well, I've, got it, I've got it eight inches up on the right side. Eight inches back here. So getting all that oil tilted over into the hubs. So at this moment, we got all that oil being drained over into the left hub. And I'll let's say here about five minutes. I'll back down and then do the other side. So that way I know those hub bearings are fully lubricated. Don't want no bearings crapping out on us brand new ones. That would make that make for a bad day for sure. Well, I finally made it to the final step of this brake project adventure I've been on. So the last step was burnishing of the rotors and pads. And it tells you all about it here, about why that's so important. And to be honest with you, I'd never really, you know, in the past I've changed rotors on cars and trucks of my own. And 
I've never done this process, but after doing it, I can see, I actually can tell the difference in, in breaking. Um, of course, you know, the, the, they want you to do this. There's, there's several things it does, evidently, because you can see it here in the mail. It talks about it. But also, I went on to Ray Bestis website and printed out what, you know, their recommendations, which is pretty much the same thing. But it talks about, you know, what it's, what it's doing. That There's three things that's happening when you do the brake burnishing process. As, uh, you know, you physically and thermally converts the composition of the pad and or rotor surfaces. And it smooths out the roughness and unevenness of the mating surfaces. And it heat cycles the entire pad structure. And I noticed when I started this process, of course here to, for the manual, you know, they want you to, for the RV, for the workhorse chassis, the W24 I'm working on, you get up to 45 miles per hour and then you hit the brakes and bring it. Now, what I would do, I would hit them hard you know, bring it down, not to a complete stop. I'd take it down to about five miles an hour uh, and then let off, drive another two miles and do it again. I just I just set my um, my um, odometer here to, to zero, my trip, trip meter down to zero. And just every two miles, I would do the same process over and over. And, um, and they want you to do that uh, for 10 times at 45 miles per hour. Uh, then they got to want you to do it. Uh, what did I say here? Another, uh, do it at six stops at 60 miles per hour. And I noticed in while I was doing this, I like like the first time I hit the brakes, the second time I hit the brakes. Uh, as I was doing this, my stop times kept getting better. And I guess that was the process of taking the brake material and moving it over from the pad onto the rotor. And I'll show you here in a second what I mean when I go, when I go outside. You'll see how the rotor uh, looks. But also I noticed, um, and I was really surprised at this because it was dry. I did this like 1.30 in the morning, me and the wife. And uh, because there's no traffic, a nice long highway nearby. We got, got out there and did this process. But I was surprised because I was braking hard. And I was bringing it, bringing it to a stop from 45 down to about 5 within about 4 seconds. So that's a pretty hard stop. And in a few times I noticed I was actually, I could feel the ABS engage. And that's the first time I ever, ever felt that. So my assumption is, because the RV is kind of light right now, if you can call, call it light, because we're, we're not on a trip and not got much stuff loaded in here. But um, my assumption was when I was braking so hard, the back wheels were maybe just starting to slip. So I could feel the ABS pulsing. So that was, I didn't expect that. But at least I know my ABS does work if you, if you break real hard, and it does stink, you know, because when you when you do that process, you're you're getting the brakes hot. And I took my little uh, thermal meter and I went down here and I noticed you can see I wrote, I wrote down the temperatures. When I did the 45 to zero, my rotors heated up to about 260 degrees, and then when I went from the 60 miles an hour, I was getting close to 400 degrees. So it it does heat the rotors up quite a bit. Um, so let me take you outside. I'm going to show you how the rotors are because I pulled the wheels off just to, to check it one, one last time. See how things look. i got I got to turn the light on. Okay, of course it's not time. So i got my light on. But you can see here, you know, the, the, the rotor, the, the new rotor, it kind of looks, you know, black in color. It's may, may not be, but it's, it's not shiny chrome mirror surface like you normally see on most rotors. And I guess that's because of the process of uh, doing the burnishing, you're taking that brake material off, off the pad and bonding it onto the rotor. And uh, so that's, I guess that's the proper way to do it. And at least I'm doing the best I can and it's, it, it does seem to work well. Uh, guys, one more thing, you know, when you do this, you wanna make sure everything's tied down tight in your RV because stuff's gonna go flying if it's not, They're doing those hard stops. But I guess this process is, is over with. I know it's been a, a long, lengthy video, but I've learned a lot, and hopefully you've learned a few things too. Thanks for watching. You have a great day. Bye.